Our final inductee this evening is Michael Wirtz. Mike is from the Eau Claire area and has been a certified bowler for almost 50 years. Over that time, he has rolled 46 300 games and 37 800 series. Mike has earned the respect of not only his Wisconsin peers, but of the whole Northwest region. Mike has been a force in the Central Bowlers Association. The CBA membership covers a five-state area, including Wisconsin, Minnesota, North and South Dakota, and Iowa. The CBA runs a monthly tournament, and at one point, Mike bowled in 125 consecutive events over a 10-year period. His wife really appreciated that. Oh, I'm sorry. He has nine CBA titles, was a three-time first-team All-Star, CBA Player of the Year, and was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2002. Mike was also a PBA member for two years, with four caches out of only six events. He is also a six-time Chippewa Valley Match Game Champion with titles in 1980, 1989, 1992, 1995, 1997, and 2000. He was inducted into the Eau Claire Area USBC Hall of Fame in 2008. Mike's performance in the Wisconsin State USBC Open and Open Seniors speaks for itself. With a first place finish in 2018 Open Senior Team, and he was a single scratch champion in 2021 at the Wisconsin State Open Singles Scratch with an 825. For the past three years, he has averaged 248.97 in our Open Championship. <laughs> Mike. It's time you join the Wisconsin State USBC Hall of Fame. Three weeks ago, my daughter got married in Oshkosh, and I called her about a week before, and I said, do uh, you want your dad to make a speech of any kind? And she says, Dad, I don't want you anywhere near a microphone. <laughs> and for the next 12 minutes, you're going to find out why. <laughs> you are who you hang around with. My dad told me that years ago, and it turns out he was right. <clears throat> Nobody gets up here by themselves, and I'm sure the, the three other inductees would agree. Um, I used to think that shooting 300s and 800s and winning various singles titles was a cat's meow. That's until I discovered team bowling. The epitome of this for me was one night of the USBC National Tournament in Vegas in 2019. I was a part of a bunch of misfits that shot the stadium's first 3300 scratch. Um, uh, when we left our two teams that night, we were in first place and tenth place, and officially on Eagle Watch. Um, we weren't alumni from Wichita State. We weren't former Team USA players. We were just a bunch of guys who burned and pushed and played incredibly well together. <clears throat> when we finished with the proverbial pictures, uh, we started taking our shoes off and putting our equipment away. All of a sudden, I got teary-eyed. I didn't want the boys to see me like this, so I turned away and I wiped my eyes. And I, I glanced back at a guy named Craig Schiffler. Yeah, he just went me the bird. <laughs> and he was wiping his eyes off too, and we just looked at each other and laughed and we hugged. Uh, that was a moment. 
So then we went to pick up our bracket money, which we split as a team, like most teams do, 10 ways. Uh, almost $13,000 in bracket money just for team. <clears throat> we were sitting there together, and all of a sudden it, it kind of got quiet. And all of a sudden, one of, our, one of our teammates, his name is John Holmes, not the porn star, <laughs> sat there and he goes, what the F just happened? <laughs> For six weeks, we were on Eagle Watch. And twice a day, we'd watch the teams come and go and fail. And we started to believe we could do this. And then with two weeks to go, somebody beat us. And then a couple days later, somebody else beat us. But, um, and, and we'd won many state and uh, team challenge events before and after, but nothing was like that night. We had 10 guys all working together. It's a memory that we're going to have forever. We still talk about that. And put your hands up, guys, the five idiots that I brought with you. <laughs> It shows you what this sport can do. Um, I, I didn't ask these guys to come, and I, they'd known it was on, and I said, well, I gotta figure out who I'm gonna invite. And Craig Schiffler says, it doesn't matter if you're inviting us or not, we're coming. <laughs> and uh, that's a seven and a half hour drive, because they're from Minnesota. Uh, don't hold that against them, because they've had to watch the Vikings for years. <laughs> Anyway, I've got other idiot teammates here tonight I'd like to acknowledge. Um, first one, uh, my best buddy, Terry Halita. Uh, Nobody uh, has more practice games with me, uh, league games, tournament miles. Um, we share a couple of Minnesota state titles and a Wisconsin state title together. Terry, thank you. Next person I'd like to thank is my dad. I wasn't going to do this, but a couple of guys said, if you don't, we're going to come up there and do it for you. It's a tough one. Um, my dad, Wally Wurz, um, he was always at everything that I bowled. Um, if something in my game was wrong, uh, he could pick it out right away, and he'd fix, fix everything. He was my edge. And when he passed, um, I had a tremendous sense of loss. And uh, he had several pairs of old cotton socks that I used to put on uh, my feet when I got cold or wet from my youth uh, right through my college days. And they were a comfort to me. Um, and uh, when, when my brother uh, emptied the house out, he said, do you want anything? And I said, yeah, I want, I want those cotton socks. And uh, ever since then, uh, whenever I go to a bowl of tournament, I put on a pair of cotton socks, my dad's socks. And the funny part is that was when I was 58, and from I'd say age 58 till now I'm 65. I've won uh, three Wisconsin state titles, um, a lot of team challenge titles, and a lot of other stuff that I never even thought was possible. And uh, I got a pair on right now. <laughs> And I've had some buddies say, it's too bad he isn't here to see you. And uh, he's here, uh, no doubt in my mind. And uh, uh, thanks, Dad. I appreciate it. Uh, next on my list, a guy named Johnny Cryer. Wave, Johnny. He's, le he's left-handed, but don't hold that against him. <laughs> Uh, I met him when he was a youngster, and I mentored him a bit, and uh, uh, he got me back into the game when I was older. I, was, I figure I looked at my age, and I'm ready to quit, and my best days are done, and he got me back in. Look at him shaking his head. Um, uh, he has uh, anchored a lot of my doubles titles, a lot of my team titles. Um, if they ever, the, the one knock against him is if they ever put a pitch clock on him like they do in Major League Baseball. He's got over 100, 300 games. He'd have about three. <laughs> 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 uh, 
but that that being, yeah, he's our human rain delay. That's what we call him. <laughs> but he's he's the best, flat out the best anchor man I've ever seen. I have never seen anybody strike like this guy ever. He's got an eagle with him to prove it with his buddy Steve Bone. Okay, next guy is uh, George Blase. Give a wave, George. Thank you. <laughs> I've known George for 45 years. You can see he's sitting right next to me. Um, uh, he's, he's a guy that I bounce stuff off of. He, he doesn't always tell me what I want to hear, but he tells me what I need to hear. Um, he even gave me the thumbs up on a certain waitress at a bowling alley almost 40 years ago. <laughs> Who are you going to meet in a bowling alley that you're going to marry? Seriously? <laughs> that would be... A girl named Kelly Rogers, now Kelly Wurz, give a wave. <laughs> During league nights, we all talk about our significant others and the Packers and deer hunting and all of that, but um, <clears throat> and every now and then you hear somebody say, I, I got a good one. Um, I got the best. Not even close. In the 37 years we've been married, uh, she never said, I don't want you to bowl this weekend. Um, and she's always been supportive. She's not competitive at all. Um, but, uh, sorry, lost my thought here. But I, I shouldn't have looked at her. That just threw me away. <clears throat> but she always understood that I had that competitive nature, and I, and I had to go out and do it, and she was good. She's also uh, a great teacher and, and a great mom. Woo! So what comes from a great mom? Three great kids. Um, my mother was off the charts smart. She graduated from Temple University when she was 17. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, apparently the uh, smart gene skips a generation, so I'm stupid. <laughs> but my kids all got, got the smart thing. And uh, I got Dan, Chris, and Molly give a wave. Thank you. <laughs> Out of that, we have a coding engineer, a master's degree, and a PhD. And, and uh, best of all, they're really nice people. <laughs> And uh, another sideline on the George Strait concert. It was George Strait, Little Big Town, and uh, Chris Stapleton. And they had tickets to it, too. <laughs> so thank you for coming here and supporting your dad as he attempts the speech. Thanks, guys. <laughs> So, which leads me to the story about how I got up here in the first place. Um, there were four of us at Hudson Bowl after a tournament, just shooting the breeze, when the owner of the, the bowling alley, Dan Klatt, asked me in front of Gary Green and Mr. Todd Savoy, why do I bowl so well in the Wisconsin State Tournament? And I said, honestly, it's because bowling with two Hall of Famers, uh, I don't want to embarrass myself. And with that, Mr. Todd Savoy showed me his middle finger. <clears throat> and I call him, and uh, I call him Mr. Todd Savoy because in this room, if you have six eagles, you got a mister in front of your name. And that's what he's got. Anyway, I said, what does that mean? And he says, F you. And I get, I get that part, but why, why at this moment? And he said, you should be in there too. And then uh, Gary Green pipes in, he says, I just had two very, very good Wisconsin State tournaments. He says, if you have another one, I'm going to nominate you. Um, so I had another good tournament, and uh, uh, Gary got the paperwork going, and apparently there were too many three- and four-syllable words in there, and he had trouble. <laughs> so he asked Mr. Todd Savoy to help him out. And, <laughs> and uh, between a little back and forth, uh, Todd and I got the paperwork in, and here I am. <laughs> and it, uh, 
<clears throat> seriously, I've got a couple of state titles with these guys and with uh, combined Eat Eagles between them when, when they uh, submit something to the Hall of Fame committee with that resume, you have to listen. Uh, thanks, guys. I wouldn't be here without you. Um, the next part, I wanted to pick on somebody and my confidant, George Blase, who I run everything by, said, I don't think that's a good idea to poke the bear. And George is generally right, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Everyone knows a guy, that guy. When he walks into a bowling alley, everyone knows it. If he's having a good day, you know it. If he's having a bad day, you know that too. I remember back years ago, I was bowling a PBA regional, and I met s such a person. His first name might be Jeff, and his second name rhymes with squiggles. <laughs> For those of you who don't speak bowling, his name is Jeff Briggles, and he's usually sitting at the cool table somewhere back there with Mark McDowell. And I, I still can cut on him because uh, my buddy Andrew Pfeffer there is videotaping this, and it'll be on the internet forever, so. So he'll see it. Anyway, I made the cut, and it's day two. And about halfway through, I'm getting ready to bowl Jeff. And I think I read people pretty well, and I can tell he doesn't think too much of me. I don't hook the ball much. Okay, I don't hook it at all. Just ask these idiots with me. Yeah. Think <laughs> <laughs> My next line is, as Todd Savoy would say, I throw a hockey puck. <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking, well, maybe if I beat him, he'll at least respect me a little bit. Uh, we had a good match. I beat him 230-something to 220-something. There, I thought that settles that. Um, as I'm taking my equipment to the next pair of lanes to bowl a guy named Dale Traber, a pretty good name, um, I hear Jeff uh, loudly proclaim, yep, I'm the highest, highest of anyone who does anything to the ball, and I'm in sixth place. And I, I looked over at uh, Dale Traver and I said, is he like this all the time? And Dale Traver says, yeah, he is to it. <laughs> Fast forward some years and I hear this same guy writes a bowling newsletter. <laughs> what could possibly come out of the brain of this jack wagon, I wonder? <laughs> I can tell you know him because that hits him right on the button. <laughs> so anyway, then I started reading his articles and I was really disappointed because they were really good. <laughs> um, he hits on everything that bowlers across league nights in Wisconsin and beyond are talking about. The USBC is not a perfect entity. The USBC National Tournament is not perfect. His ball reviews, uh, every storm ball is not the best ball they've ever made. If you ever read these reviews, everybody says, oh, this is great because they want free stuff. Nobody tells this guy what to say. If he'd said a ball hooks too much for him, I'd buy two of them. <laughs> uh, and with his resume, he's got, I believe, 30 regional titles and five eagles. You gotta listen to what he has to say. So, uh, Jeff, wherever you are, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, the sporting, sport of bowling really needs your honesty. And I'm sure he has a lot to do and a lot to say with uh, who gets into the Hall of Fame and who doesn't. So it's ironic that I had that back then and now here I am and he's actually written a couple nice things about me. <laughs> I remember telling my buddies back in Eau Claire when the Hall of Fame paperwork was submitted that if I got in, if I got in, if I didn't, I didn't. Um, that was okay too. I'm good with what I've accomplished, and now it's just a matter of someone's opinion who may or may not know exactly who I am. And then Rick Hall called me and told me, he says, you're in, and I go, huh. That was my response. <laughs> Last page, don't worry. <laughs> 
And I, I just told him, I says, I, I wouldn't think a guy from Eau Claire would be noticed and I would pass the test. And I guess I was more shocked than anything. I'm sure Rick wasn't really impressed by my lack of reaction. Um, and I hung up the phone and I sat down on the couch and all of a sudden tears just flowed down my face. It's like you don't know until it happens. And uh, <clears throat> it was really a moment. And uh, you think it doesn't mean anything, you damn right it means a lot to me, it really does. This does, <clears throat> excuse me. Luckily, my uh, therapist was in the room at the time. <laughs> that would be Rowdy, a 14-year-old poodle mix. <laughs> he was wondering, what the F just happened? <laughs> uh, he's a good listener, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, in closing, uh, congrats to Dwayne and Tracy and Jerry. I'm sure that this day means as much to each of them as it does to me. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee, my family, Mr. Squiggles, <laughs> my idiot teammates who traveled so far and helped me get up here. Uh, it's very humbling, but very satisfying too. Thank you all, appreciate it.